All right, y'all. We are live. We are live. Um, I'm actually <coughs> not live, but um, I just got word about Diddy's bond, and as you can see, it was denied again. And I know that there are a lot of jokes on social media and just on the internet about baby oil and all of this, but I do um, believe we should just stay focused on the trial itself and the individuals involved that have come forward, as well as a lot of them are, you know, potentially that have not come forward because it, it, this is a mess. Okay. So it, see, it shows here that, um, uh, the judge denied that he's bond again, he will remain detained until his trial begins. And I saw um, where someone, another content creator said that it could be years. It could be years before he goes to trial. Um, I'm actually going to do a different video just discussing uh, the prison that he is at um, so that you guys can kind of get an idea of what his living situation is right now. In it, it says the government has proven the defendant is a danger. Regarding the bail package, it is insufficient even on risk of flight. And this is a copy of the uh, the, the defense team's uh, proposed $50 million bond. You see he was going to do a $50 million bond, which would be co-signed by Combs, his son, his sister, and mother of his oldest daughter, and his three adult sons. Uh, the equity that would be, have been secured is um, the home in Miami appraised at $48 million. Uh, He went ahead and paid off any remaining mortgage um, so that the home could be used to secure a bond and be free of a mortgage. Uh, secured equity of Mr. Cone's mother's home located in Miami, Florida. Uh, he was His travel was to be restricted to the Southern District of Florida and Southern District of New York to attend court, meet with his counsel, and attend medical appointments, which will, we will address to the court in a separate sealed submission, as well as Eastern District of New York or the District of New Jersey, only to the extent that his travel to and from New York involves an airport in those districts. His passport was surrendered to his counsel on April 1st. His counsel advised the prosecutors of this fact in an email dated the same day. Counsel will provide this passport, passport to pretrial services and the passports of the following family members were surrendered as well. His mother, Janice Combs, and his daughters, Chance, Jesse, Delilah, and Lo. <clears throat> um, you know, I think that it was a bad call for the attorney to speak on the uh, case with Cassie and I'm going to research because I thought they couldn't talk about the case that was a part of the um, agreement with the payout that they couldn't talk about the case and he's he started alluding to you know that her case is the reason that now all of this is happening so I think that that's a little uh, I think that's a little far-fetched and so you'll see where I said, you know, and now he is victim blaming, you know, basically what he was saying, the attorney is saying is that the video we saw that was released by CNN states that um, Cassie hit him upside the head, hit him upside the head, y'all. Oops, oops, side the head. The attorney says that she hit him upside the head with the phone and ran. And that's why Diddy was in a towel said that she took his clothes and that's why he was in a towel and that's why he chased after her. But it is understood that there actually was somebody else in that hotel room. And let me tell you something. You know, I think that, you know, the, the, the sex games and the, you know, the X games and the F-offs and all of that stuff. I mean, look, when you are potentially in love with someone and everybody says, oh, they look like they were so in love when they were together. Okay, get it. But once you really are in love with somebody, do you really want someone else in the bedroom like that? 
Do you want your relationship to, relationship to be based on the, his fetishes or, in my opinion, his fetishes or his need for different things within the bedroom? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, to me, it's just weird. Um, and so, you know, he's saying that, you know, she um, took his phone, I mean, hit him with the phone, ran out, took his clothes. That's why he was in a towel. And my thing is, do you not remember that your client went on lot went and did a video apologizing, saying that after that he went and got the help that he needed? And now in these filings here, we see that there is some drugs and uh, drug issues. And when they actually arrested him uh, up in the hotel room, there was like a pink sub powder substance that they presumed to be ecstasy. So like sir come on now now you the victim blaming is horrible and i think that again the victim blaming is another example of that power that power that people have right you have the power to even come out and then say oh uh, 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 it was her she was the one that initiated he was just trying to defend himself and get his clothes back or whatever again using your power your name the positioning and the attorney that you can afford at this time um that you can afford at this time to then go ahead and start putting out a false narrative and the thing about it is i wonder if cassie can you know seek seek some retribution for that so that would be interesting i don't i you know i almost i i don't know i don't know what do you guys think do you think cassie will even address or have her attorney address the statements made recently by Diddy's attorney. What what do you guys think? Um and another little bit of news that I thought was interesting. DJ Envy says he believes Diddy should be granted the opportunity for bail just as other celebs formerly accused of sex crimes. And I'm gonna play this, but one of the things, you know, DJ Envy can really get like he gets like like i'll never forget the interview with ebony k williams never will i forget that <laughs> and the way that he came for ebony k and i get it ebony k williams has her opinions um and people don't agree but i also don't think even if you don't agree with what her opinion was when it came to the bus driver in that situation i still think that you have to stay professional and i think that you still should be respectful even if you disagree with what her stance was that's her belief that's her value system that's the way she sees it i'm not saying i agree or disagree but the way that he came at her it was aggressive and it was mad disrespectful in my opinion so he says you know that he believes that he should um be granted the opportunity for bail and i think it's interesting because we we, we mentioned yesterday that when he when he was made aware of the of potential charges, et cetera, he, the, he, him, and all of his affiliates were out here contacting people, trying to convince them not to say anything or to say that it was consensual. Um, he, uh, you know, uh, was called called Kalina fifty four times after Don Richard really, you know, did file her uh, lawsuit. So again, they're not giving him bail because of his behavior since the Cassie lawsuit and what he has done. So um, we'll play this here. I just think he's a slippery suspect. Right. right. It will help you listen. All that baby oil. But so, yeah, I, do I, wanna, I think he should get one. Like, he, when you look at people like Harvey Weinstein, I got one. And you look at some of these other people, OG Simpson, I got one. Yeah. Bill Cosby got one. Then right. he should be able to get a bail. If I don't, he does I don't not, want my name mentioned nowhere near any of those people. At all, ever, though. period. 
if I if he does get if he does not get a bail though, um, I, I don't know if they're going to move him. But right now he's being housed at NBC Brooklyn, and some of the people that have been there are Kelly, Fetty Wap, Michael Cohen. Um, now you don't want your name, but those people leave him. Yeah. Nope. Uh, um, and I I want to you know move it. And I agree with flawed and flawed fabulous. And she said, not a single one of these men are defending the victims. And I agree. You know, I think it was also in that conversation when, you know, there was just some frustration from people about Cam Newton and him saying he didn't want to be married, but he has eight kids. And, and you know, I saw a, a large amount of men saying, I see both sides. And I think that this is just another case of a man with money, a man with status, a man with uh, power, although it is it has dwindled a lot, a man with some form of equity, uh, a man who is connected to a lot of people in the industry, and you want to still give, you know, some level of uh, an olive branch to him. Nobody's thinking about the victims, and I think that a lot of times, even within the Cassie situation, we're thinking, well, she stayed, she stayed, but I'm going to tell you something. We all know people individuals who have stayed in relationships that they should have been left so you know when somebody is saying that your mom is going to be homeless you're going to be homeless you're not going to have nothing i'm going to take everything from you this young lady was young um very um it, it can be very can be influenced um easily so i just feel like you know again we have to think about the victims he was the one with the power he was the one with the money, the position, the connections, the friends, the access. And, you know, if no one was flocking to him because of that, then that it kind of, to me, goes against what all of that means. People seek power for a reason. People seek more money for a reason. People want access for a reason. People want positions for a reason. And those reasons are part of why all of these individuals were in his camp so you know and engaging with him so to say oh well, they were crazy just because they were chasing money or whatever i mean that's why they get it right that's why people get power so um i don't i i i i think he's honestly in the right place um the assistant u.s attorney reveals content of text messages did he did he send cassie after he assaulted her in 2016. And so it's obvious that um, the U assistant U.S. attorney is like, look, um, we want to make sure that we're very clear on what he says versus what he does. So um, he says, call me. The cops are here. I got six kids. Yo, please call me. I am surrounded. You're going to abandon me all alone. And I just feel like that's kind of what, that's what someone who continues to try to get you to do what they want you to do. Oh, so you're going to do me like that? Oh, so that's how it is? Oh, so you're just going to leave me hanging like that? You're just going to leave me like that? And I mean, at the end of the day, this girl was running for her life, for real, for real. Um, she references the incident involving Cassie that led to the violent encounter seen on video released by CNN. The defendant had a F off on March 5th, 2016. We have evidence there was one commercial sex ex worker there in the room during the assault. She isn't even wearing shoes. She is in danger. Defender storms out in a towel. We have a message from the victim. I still have crazy bruising. He claims he wanted to get his clothes back, but that's not what happened here. She tried to escape a room with the defendant and a commercial ex-worker. She fled without shoes. Immediately after the assault, the defendant sent these messages. Call me. The cops are here. I got six kids. Yo, please call me. I am surrounded. You're going to abandon me all alone. The defendant knew he had done something that could elicit police response. Um, and so there's also um, someone saying that one of the hotel employees who tried to step in and stop it was um, later paid off to not say anything. So D Diddy's bond appeal is currently underway and a US, an assistant U.S. attorney, Emily Johnson, is making the prosecution's, prosecution's case for Diddy remaining behind bars until the start of his trial. During her statement, she referenced Diddy's 2016 assault on Cassie, which was caught on hotel surveillance video. She revealed that Diddy sent text messages to Cassie after the assault and alleges that they were engaged in an F off with an ex worker before the assault took place. Um, 
tone. Let's let's have a conversation down in the comments. I want to know, um, do you think he should have gotten bond or bail? Let me know. What do you think? Look, this is a free space where we can comment and share our beliefs and not be disrespectful. So I, I want to know what you guys think. And tune in for the next video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video.